Matthew 26, 6 to 7 tells us, Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at table. The anointing of Jesus before his crucifixion is recorded in Matthew, Mark, and John. The place is Bethany, not far from Jerusalem. It's the home of, of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. But this time they're in the home of Simon the leper, someone who must have been healed by Jesus because leprosy and those with leprosy were considered despised and unclean. John identifies Mary as the woman who anoints Jesus with the expensive perfume. Pure nard is a very expensive aromatic perfume that comes all the way from the Himalayas. And it's a long way from Jerusalem and Bethany, therefore costly. The amount that was used, says John, was, was a Roman pound or litra, which in Greek is about, in Greek, which is about 12 ounces in our measurement and close to half a liter in volume. Mary breaks the flask in Mark and pours out the entire contents upon Jesus' head, his feet, so much so that it says it filled the whole house with the smell. The act was so extravagant that, and so over the top that some people said, why this waste, this cost, over a year's worth of wages. Jesus said, however, it was a beautiful act of worship that would be told all over the world wherever the gospel is spread. But more importantly, Jesus said it was in preparation for his body to be crucified and buried. For as you remember, they said there was no time to anoint the body after they took him down from the cross. Jesus, condemned to die as a common criminal, yet anointed with the fragrance of kings. From this high act of extreme worship and preparation for the cross, the account turns to record one of the most painful of human experiences, betrayal. Luke 22, 3 and 4 tells us, Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the number of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. Judas is a perplexing and complicated figure. While it's easy for us to say Jesus, uh, Judas was a bad man, he was, he was wicked, he was demon-possessed, but is it that simple? If Judas was demon-possessed, wouldn't the disciples have figured it out in the three years they were together? Yet Jesus chose Judas to be in his inner circle of the twelve. He was entrusted with the group's finances. Judas saw with his own eyes the miracles, and he heard the words of life and the words of the gospel. Jesus washed Judas' feet along with the other disciples, but something was wrong. Perhaps he wasn't saved, or perhaps something happened. Perhaps Judas's concept of the kingdom of God and the Messiah, King, that Jesus had been talking about did not match his own ideas. Perhaps with all the talk of the death of the King on a cross, Judas lost hope that Jesus fit his version of the Messiah, King of the Jews. Was it merely for monetary gain that he betrayed Jesus? How could he sell out Jesus for only 30 pieces of silver? only about four months' wages. Though this amount fulfilled biblical prophecy, he could have asked for 10 times more and received it. Whatever his mental state, Satan entered into him and he sought to betray Jesus. A betrayal made most treacherous because Judas, Judas was considered a trusted friend. Chosen to be in the inner circle of Jesus' disciples, Later, Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss, the greeting of intimate fellowship and friendship. Yet in all this, God's plan was moving forward, even in its timing. 
Jesus the Messiah had to die on Passover, and Judas was the instrument for that purpose. Betrayal is one of the most painful experiences we as humans can experience. Betrayal by a trusted friend is, is multiplied 10 times. The pain of betrayal to us is such that if we're not careful, it can overwhelm us, it can fester, becoming a root of bitterness in our lives. Whatever you think about Judas Iscariot, Jesus was betrayed by a trusted friend. Wasn't it enough that Jesus had to suffer the pain and indignity and suffering of being crucified on a cross for the sins of the world without suffering the humiliation of betrayal by a friend? Yet Jesus experienced this and took it upon himself as he did every other sin, every other sin of the world, dying upon the cross to pay for our every sin that we might be forgiven and made whole. Today, perhaps you have been betrayed. Betrayed by a friend or a spouse or a family member, perhaps even a past church. The pain is almost unbearable. Remember Jesus. He knows the pain of betrayal by experience. Don't hold on to it and let it fester in your heart. Take it to Jesus, who bore all the sins of the world on the cross. Perhaps you've been the object of gossip or harsh words or felt judged harshly by others, though it's tempting to hold on to the pain and the negative thoughts toward that offender. Let it go. Come to Jesus that he may wash you and cleanse you and make you whole. Perhaps you've been the offender and have sinned and in some way so great that you think you cannot be forgiven. Don't be like Judas, who in despair thought his sin was too great to be forgiven. Come to Jesus. Remember, there were two disciples who betrayed Jesus during this week, Judas Iscariot and Simon Peter. Peter denied three times even knowing Jesus. He went out in sorrow and wept bitterly. But a little later on that boat, he, he jumped into the water and swam running to Jesus where he received forgiveness and restoration. Likewise, Judas was sorrowful, but sadly, he refused to come to Jesus and was destroyed by despair. Listen, there is no sin that Jesus Christ will not forgive if we confess and repent. Come to him. Come to him who bore all our sorrows that we may receive forgiveness and healing and restoration. Oh, how great is Jesus. How great is Jesus, our Savior. He took the sins of the world upon himself by dying on the cross. He took all our sin upon himself, including betrayal. Let us come to him in thanksgiving, confessing our sins, and receiving forgiveness in his name. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you you bore all the sins of the world. Thank you so much for that. As we think of these things this week, we, we cry out, Lord, for forgiveness for our sins. And we thank you, you took every sin, even perhaps one of the worst things, betrayal. You bore it upon yourself on the cross. So Lord, help us to let those things go, to come to you, Lord, to let you take away our sin, our hurt, our pain. We pray that. And Lord, help us to be like Mary, celebrating that the Lord Jesus loves us so much that we pour out everything we have in worship to him. Let us come to you this week. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. His goodness, His merit, His righteousness, this sinner's only plea. O oh, foolish pride, 